Humanity has been driven from Earth, but now it's time to take it back. Join the Reconquest and fight the Scourge on the Drop Zone Commander Hub at BeastsOfWar.com. Become a general of mighty armies at the Kings of War Hub. Take command of elves, dwarves, and orcs in this game of massed fantasy combat on BeastsOfWar.com. Hi everybody, welcome to What's in the Box. Today it is time for some Horde's goodness. And mm -hmm. we're having a look at Loki from the Circle of Orberos. Yep. So this is one of the uh, new Warp Wolf heavy beasts. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's get a look at the box. He looks badass. He does. Doesn't he? He does. Uh, it was actually funny because whenever we were at SmogCon, uh, the guys from Privateer were over and they actually ran the, the three little piggybacks and the big bad wolf. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was a really fun scenario they ran for everybody at the event. That sounds awesome. Shall we have a look at him then? Of course, of course. I, I'm assuming he's a metal resin hybrid kit. Hey, I'm right. So, rules wise speed 6, strength 11, mat 7, rat 6, defense 14, armor 17. Not bad. He's got his thorn hook for a range V8, rate of fire 1, uh, power 15. Not bad. He's got the battle shield for a power and strength of 14. Shield gives him plus 2 armor, bringing him to a 19. Very nice for a beast. And he can bite you if he really, really, really wants to for a power and strength of 14. Yeah. He has a lot of special rules, so I'll take care of that in the next bit of the video. Mm hmm. Bits. Bits. Body. Body. So, main body. <sighs> really so, nice detail. So much of it in one piece, though. It's gorgeous. Look at the armor detail as well. Mm hmm. Yeah. See, whenever I'm looking at these, it's always the muscular detail that gets me, just doing that organicness. Because mm -hmm. whenever you think privateer, you're thinking war machine, you're thinking heavy metal. But they can do really, really amazing organic sculpts as well. Yeah, they really can. And the snarl. The, oh, yes. the, that snarl, though. <laughs> that is really, really mean. Yeah, it's really well done. Mm -hmm. Next up. Shield. Oh, nice. Very nice. Isn't That's it? some beautiful detail on there. Excellent place for a gate as well. Yeah, because it trims off just right at the back here, yep. where it's just out of sight a little bit. And I think, yeah, that's at the bottom of the shield too. So whenever that's on him, that's just completely out of sight, out of mind, if I don't drop it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, fantastic. Even the fact that they've got really nice wood detail on the back of it. Mm -hmm. So if you just catch a glimpse of it, you'll be fit to see it. Yeah. Next. Teal. Teal. I always find the teals on these a little weird. Because <laughs> you, th you think wolf, you're not thinking this long, smooth tail with spikes coming up out of it. Almost like a rat-esque sort of tail. Yeah, almost. Only, well, I don't know, because a rat's tail would actually have ribbing on it. Oh, it's well, smooth. Okay. So it's kind of like just the very end of a smooth-skinned snake's tail. Yeah. Yeah. Next. Uh, arm and hook. Arm and hook. So, if I get the bits here. So, oof. Okay, you wouldn't like to take an elbow to the face from this guy. <laughs> that would hurt. <laughs> Uh, then you have the, the hook itself, mm -hmm. which is it's really primal, primal designed. It is, yeah. You know, it's almost got a, sort of a Minoan style to it, mm -hmm. which is really cool. It's like a big fishing hook. Right. Yes. There's not much to talk about in model wise because it's a gorgeous sculpt that's very well executed and there's very few parts. Yes. Now, he does have a bond, so he is a character. Mm -hmm. While this model is bonded to Tanith and in her control range, it gains Prowl. While a model with Prowl has concealment, it gains stealth. That's mm -hmm. nice. Yep. All right, well, I'll tell you what, John. Uh, I'm going to have a quick read through the back of this. Yep. You go get them put together, and then we'll come back. Okay. Okay, everybody, we are back. John has Loki built, and I now know his special rules. Mm -hmm. So, uh, interesting things. Animus is very useful on this guy. So it's elusive, so it gives the spellcaster dodge. So he can cast it on himself, uh -huh. or his warlock can actually take and use it right. for themselves, mm -hmm. which is very, very cool. Uh, Controlled warping is a really nice thing. So warp wolves, you know, they're masses of changingness and stuff like that. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> Basically, it gives him three in-game effects that he can pick one of each round. So he mm -hmm. can give himself plus two strength if he really wants to. So yep. that'll bring his melee attacks up to 16. Not bad. The thorn hook, though. Mm -hmm. Because it's a thrown weapon, it, any modifiers to his strength affect it. Mm -hmm. So that brings it up to a power 15. Right. So very, very nice. Uh, he's got... Pernatural, pernatural reflexes. So this model uh, cannot be targeted by combined ranged or melee attacks, and uh, models don't gain backstrike bonuses against it. So if someone's in his rear arc, they're not getting the bonuses for that. Yeah. Last one is Hunter. Uh, this model ignores concealment and cover whenever making a ranged attack. Mm -hmm. So that's very useful. So you know you can 
hook a warcaster from behind a wall and just go, nope, you're coming here. Yeah. Because the actual thorn hook has drag on it. Uh -huh. So as yeah. soon as you hit someone with drag and damage them, that model gets dragged directly towards you mm -hmm. until they hit an obstacle. So actually, if it was someone behind a wall, you wouldn't be fit to drag them. But no. if they're out in the open and you can get a, an angle, a lane or something, you can just drag them right through and go, oh, look, you're out of position. Munch, munch, munch. Hello. As soon as the model hits base contact with him, he gets a melee attack, yeah. and then he can buy additionals as his normal combat action. Mm -hmm. uh, last one is Throne that I said, so that Thornhook, if he's getting debuffs and stuff, the power of that weapon goes down. Mm -hmm. If he's getting bonuses, it goes up. So, very, very cool abilities. Yeah. Now for, the model. For a beautiful looking little model too. Look at him. Isn't that gorgeous? He's so angry and mean looking, and I'm really happy with the way the shield is sort of open there. So yeah. you can actually see that wood effect that they've sculpted in. Yeah. There's there's barely an inch wasted on this model, you know, detail wise. There's a mm -hmm. whole lot in there. Yeah. Well, it's for those of us who don't like doing a lot of freehand and stuff, you've got plenty of detail to work with. Yeah. For those of us that do, I mean, like, there's enough open flesh there that you could go nuts and do some tribal tattoos down this guy. Mm hmm. You know, if you do some like, uh, what's the, do you like a, a, a tribal sort of thorn work or something? Would look uh, you cool? see, I was thinking more of the, uh, oh, what's the one the rock has? Malaysian, Polynesian, something like that? I wouldn't know. Uh, I can't remember. Guys, comments below. You know the tattoo designs I'm talking about. They're sort of done like triangular shapes. Right, yeah. And done uh, basically manually with someone on your back with a little stick going tap, tap, tap. Yeah. Apparently those really hurt. I'm sure they do. <laughs> I'm sure they do. <laughs> but no, it's, it's a fantastic looking model. There's a lot, a lot you can do with them. Looks like it's going to be a lot of fun in game. And just look at that face. Who yeah. couldn't love that face and want to take that puppy home? <laughs> I, I just love the hook. I, the there's, hook there's something nice. about the hook that just looks really mean. Mm -hmm. It needs a, a piece of dead something hanging from it. Maybe if you could sculpt up maybe like a little winter guard guy, just top half of him, just hanging flat off it. <laughs> I just love it. Yeah, the yeah. guys at Privateer are really doing amazing work on their sculpts now. You know, it's, it's the same thing we're seeing across the entire industry, and especially in Privateer. I think sculpts are just getting better. Mm -hmm. You know, people are getting more and more into how they're doing stuff, getting into the flavor of each faction. Yeah, because that's the thing that always comes through so well in the Privateer stuff is it feels like the faction. Yeah, it feels like it's meant to be there. Well, I I can still remember the first time we as Beast of War looked at Privateer press, and it was like two thousand eight. Was that Mark One? Uh huh. It was oh, well. the, the original Mark One starter sets for War Machine. Uh -huh. and looking at the sculpts and everything was made out of metal, and it was just like, that's going to be such a pain. Look at the size of the legs, <laughs> sort of thing. But now everything's moving to the plastic and the rustic stuff, and it's yeah, the quality just keeps binding and up yeah. and up and up. We well, see it's, it's one thing I like as well because you can still get the the metal bases if yeah. you go hunting for them, uh, because I know some people they like to feel the weight of heavy metal moving across yep. the table. I, mean, I always liked just having kid or jacks that I could throw at my opponent's head if I lost. Your your war beasts and stuff when they were metal, it just felt there was some they had a, a presence about them when you moved them. It was, like, it was just like <laughs> it was just like yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Which is why I see quite a few people actually going for the metal bases. Yeah. I'm not sure if you can get a metal colossal base, because I'm not sure how much that would weigh. Too much. <laughs> Far too much. Well, if you're heading to a tournament and trying to get it through airport security, sir, why do you have a metal discus in your bag? No, no, it's not that. It's not that. It's not a discus, seriously. <laughs> you can look at it if you want, but don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I heard a horror story. I heard a horror story while I was at SmogCon. Is this to do with this, though? Uh, not this in particular. Okay. So it was one of the colossals that had just been painted. It wasn't out yet. So everything was done up nicely and just sealed in nice foam to transport it all safely. Yeah. Yeah, guy goes through airport security with it. They look at it and go, the hell's that? Can you open that up? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, not a problem, whatever you need. Is this hollow, sir? Uh, parts of it? They break it apart. Do you do a painted model and they break it apart? Ah! But back on topic. Mm. Fantastic little war beast. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be seen on the tabletop a lot. And, uh, well, guys, it's up to you now. Tell us, will you be using Loki? Will you not? We'll move on. We'll see you in the next one. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.